I have a confession to make. This isn't easy for me to say, but I'm a grown man and I popped off for a me costume. Not the funny bone boy or the mug homunculus, even if those were genuinely great to see due to their indie roots. No, my jaw dropped for the parody of corporate iconography turned corporate icon himself. Black Isle Studio, I mean Bethesda's own Vault Boy. For context, I played Fallout 3 at the perfect age of too young to legally play it, and it was a very formative game for me, quickly becoming one of my all-time favourites. I loved its broken, bleak world, offset by a venomous, albeit immature, sense of humour. I loved the way Moira Brown's Wasteland Survival Guide is a lengthy and greatly paced tutorial sample pack of a quest that you can derail at any point because it's funny. And I loved stumbling across a place called the Deathclaw Sanctuary, and audibly asking my brother what a Deathclaw was before finding out. Sure, the game has problems, and these games are definitely better written, but the point is I like Fallout, especially Fallout 3, and I haven't played Fallout 76, so as far as I'm concerned, I still like Fallout. That's the headspace to keep in mind for the rest of this video. I was eagerly awaiting what was next for the series, then in 2015 Bethesda announces Fallout 4 to be released at the end of the year. Of course I'm very excited for it, and at the same time I'm playing a lot of Smash 4, because being a Wii U owner was my way of rebelling against society. Take that mum. Suddenly, Nintendo announces that the Final Fantasy himself, Cloud Strife, is coming to Smash. If an anime boy with a big sword could be a fighter, then anyone could become a Smash brother. I wondered, what if Fallout was in Smash? What if Vault Boy was in Smash? So I did what any reasonable person would do and ignored my uni work for a week and I drafted up a Vault Boy Smash moveset. And here we are, it's 2020, everything is terrible, but at least Vault Boy is in Smash, kind of. Let's look back at that old moveset just to see what he could do if he was promoted to being a full on fighter. Not only is it topical, but it'll be much easier content to produce than another from scratch moveset. Thanks Sakurai. I'd like to start by shouting out Luigi L's Banjo and Kazooie moveset picture, which is what inspired the Vault Boy picture to begin with, and consequently, this entire channel. And hey, Banjo and Vault Boy both got in the game! I mean sure, maybe one of them is more legitimate than the other, but it's not a competition. They're both in the game, we're all winners! Gold and silver medal winners. But I'm actually so happy to see any Fallout representation at all, I never really thought it would happen. Secondly, fun fact, I actually made two versions of the image. One was made to look more like Pip-Boy UI, and the other was made to use Smash imagery a little bit more. The reason I did this was because of a magical artistic drive called being unemployed. Just quickly, if you don't know who Vault Boy is, he's the mascot of the fictional Vault Tech, which in Fallout lore was a company that made bomb shelters that often doubled as wicked social experiments. Vault Boy is a parody of old-timey corporate mascots and is often used to illustrate the dark and horrible experiences that the Fallout games have to offer. You know how there's cigarette ads in old Flintstones cartoons? Imagine that, but also if Fred Flintstone endorsed cannibalism. That's Vault Boy. Anyway, here's Vault Boy's idol. That sure is Vault Boy standing still alright. Next, there's his crouch, followed by his crawl. Now, in the context of Smash, this looks like a terrible crawl because you can still get shot in the face with an arrow while you do it. The idea here is that in Bethesda RPGs, you sneak when you crouch walk, and Vault Boy was always meant to be a cartoon figure. Therefore, his crawl is him sneaking like a Hanna-Barbera character. Look at it this way, Snake is a stealth game character, so his crawl is very good. Fallout is a pretty janky stealth game, so Vault Boy's crawl is a joke. Next, I drew Vault Boy walking, running, jumping, and double jumping. Just a bunch of pictures of a guy moving. Truly, I am a game design master. Honestly, in terms of movement attributes, I think me Gunner's stats fit Vault Boy pretty well. Or maybe I just dumped agility in all my Fallout playthroughs. Actual Vault Boy would probably be a bit lighter and faster than me Boy. The first move, for some reason, is the dash attack. Vault Boy runs and sprays a submachine gun. This is a reference to the run and gun perk, but it's also me really jumping the gun on how much Smash tolerates realistic firearms. Keep in mind this was made pre-Bayonetta and her pistol packing pumps. The jab is a punch punch kick combo. The kick is a reference to a cut image from Fallout 2. Ooh, I think I know why it might have been cut. This icon was supposed to be used when you gained a reputation for killing children. Oh dear, the devs changed it to a different image, but kept the child killing mechanic. Oh no, and then people were mad when Fallout 3 cut that mechanic, so fans modded it back in. Kind of like how Project M was made to make Brawl more like its predecessor, but instead of wave dashing, fans wanted child killing. Fallout is kind of a dark game, let's move on. 
for his up tilt Volt Boy shoots with a sword off shotgun, and for his forward tilt he teaches his opponent a lesson with a nail board. I say that because, in my heart, this was always meant to be the legendary weapon known as the Board of Education. His down tilt is less scholarly, however, and is a simple sweeping kick. For his up smash, Volt Boy swings a mighty sledgehammer and somehow manages to look more deranged than DDD while doing so. His forward smash sees Volt Boy lunge forward with the Death Claw gauntlet to give his opponents the least pleasant tickle in the world. The Death Claw is such an iconic Fallout creature that it felt right to include its severed, mutilated body parts as a homage, which is why, for his down smash, Volt Boy swings around the limp corpse of a Brotherhood of Steel paladin. I'm just kidding. Instead, I had it so Volt Boy shoots either side of him with a laser pistol. When I first made this moveset in 2015, I wasn't necessarily trying to express the feeling of Fallout in a moveset. Instead, I was trying to show off the toy box that Fallout games can be, and a lot of the iconic weapons. So I tried to represent all kinds of combat styles. Small guns, big guns, unarmed, melee, energy weapons, explosives. Basically, if this Volt Boy was an actual RPG player character, this would be a really bad build. The other main thing I did was find every picture of Volt Boy I could and try to cram it into a smash move. Which which is why his neutral air references the bonus hand-to-hand -hand attacks perk from Fallout 1 and 2. In Smash, this kind of move is sometimes called a sex kick, and knowing that will make it even more humiliating the next time a Link beats you by spamming his. For his up air, Volt Boy swings up with the Ripper, which is a portable chainsaw. Because when I think about dangerous industrial hardware, I imagine someone swinging chainsaws above them in the sky. For his back air, Volt Boy shoots with the hunting rifle. This weapon always felt like pure Fallout to me. I imagine this move would be like Villager's Sling shot only, the sweet spot would be at the end of the shots, fairly good range. Volt Boy's forward air is similar, however, he uses that gun from Fallout New Vegas instead, as in, it's literally called that gun. It's called that because it's actually a reference to a .223 pistol from Fallout 1 and 2, which fans just called that gun. So it's definitely fairly iconic to Fallout. And for Volt Boy's down air, he smacks down with the power glove, I mean power fist. You know Ryu and Ken's down airs? Well, imagine if those boys were as good at fist stuff as Optimus Prime is. That's the kind of powerful spike we're talking about. I love the power fist. It's so bad. In both Fallout and Smash, a character's special abilities define who they are. And in both games, specials are mostly used to hurt people. For his neutral special, he wields a gun. Wait, didn't I do this bit already? Anyway, I gave Volt Boy the 10mm pistol. It's one of the first weapons you come across in Fallout 3, so I think it makes sense as a simple projectile. In the side B, he fires from the Rock It launcher. In Bethesda Open World games, you often collect a lot of trash, so in Fallout 3, Todd Howard decided that someone should recycle that junk, even if Todd's idea of recycling was a gun that fires the miscellaneous crap you found at your enemies. Who needs bullets when you have dinner plates and garden gnomes? The rocket launcher may have existed just to be a funny thing to show off a game's physics engine, but it still gets my seal of approval, and you thought Borderlands was a looter shooter? To Volt Boy's down special, he uses his explosive skill to throw out a bottle cap mine. You might think that a lunchbox crammed with bottle caps would be a poor man's claymore, but it's actually the opposite, because caps are cash in the post-apocalypse, so a bottle cap mine is the IED of choice for the wasteland's wealthiest. Who said money couldn't bring happiness? And for Volt Boy's up B, he goes to the Robo Rodeo, as he awkwardly mounts an Enclave iBot. In the spirit of Snake's Cypher just being a random drone thing turned into an up special, I felt this would be a good nod to Fallout's various robots. Mr. Handy might be more iconic, but I think the simplicity of the iBot makes it better suited to being a recovery. Plus, when Volt Boy uses it, it could double as an old-timey radio. I drew Volt Boy's block and various dodges just to show the goofy movements this man could have, including an air dodge where he, um, seems to dab. I really hope 2015 me didn't do that intentionally. Next, Volt Boy uses his Pip Boy to stop listening to Fallout Boy and start using the Volt Tech Assisted Targeting System, better known as VATS, and not to be confused with how I mispronounce VATS. The early Fallout games had a mechanic where you could target specific limbs of your opponents, so that you could do things like choose between easier body shots, or trickier headshots, or so that you could cripple legs to slow down your enemies, or you could ignore tactics completely and just go for the groin. Modern Fallout games try to emulate this mechanic and apologise for sloppy shooter gameplay with VATS. When you use VATS, time freezes or slows, and your Pip Boy, which is basically just an industrial retro Apple Watch, allows you to target certain parts of your opponents. Unfortunately, this no longer includes the groin. Line up your next few attacks and hit play like your Adam Sandler, and you'll unleash your queue of aimed shots. For this Smash moveset, I thought that time manipulation might be a little broken, and then Bayonetta came out, and I was right. Instead of anything timey-wimey, I figured Vats could work as a grab, targeting an area in front of you, similar to Robin and Greninja's grabs. I mean, grabs in Smash basically freeze people in place anyway, so it's all aesthetic. I had pummels and throws target different body parts with different weapons. 
One version of the image had Vault Boy on Vault Boy action, while the other had Smash characters appear to take a beating. And even though it was Smash 4 fan art, I included Snake. That wasn't me predicting his return, I just liked Snake, and I wanted him back, and I wanted his dummy thick brawl butt cheeks back. Vault Boy's side taunt is charismatic, it's why people think he's great. He makes them laugh and smile, and never want to hate. If any part of a Smash move set was going to reference this special stat, it would be a taunt. I know Ken's thumbs up is pretty famous, but I think Vault Boy has him beat. Vault Boy's up taunt thumbs up is one of the most classic poses the character does. Supposedly, this pose is more than meets the winking eye. There was an old theory that if you were in the vicinity of an atomic blast, if you held up your thumb, closed one eye, and your thumb seemed to cover the mushroom cloud, it meant you were far enough away that you were out of the explosion's danger zone. Vault Boy posing in this way is thought to be a reference to that theory. So, um... Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you don't want to die horribly in a nuclear Armageddon. And for Vault Boy's down taunt, he downs a Nuka Cola. Nuka Cola is a very common drink in the Fallout universe. I'm pretty sure it's a parody of Pepsi or Dr. Pepper or something. Sometimes in Fallout, you'll be in a heated fight for your very survival. Low on health, low on ammo, and woozy due to radiation poisoning. All seems lost. Surely it can't end like this. But then. A mysterious stranger has appeared to save the day, and then he's gone. Who was this man? I don't know, but I think he'd make for a perfect assist trophy. Anyway, here's Vault Boy Kirby. He looks a bit like Lucas Kirby got into his dad's gun cabinet. And lastly, for the final smash, Vault Boy equips and fires the mighty Fat Man, and launches a mini nuke at his opponent. In hindsight, it was probably in poor taste to suggest that a Japanese game should add a nuke-firing weapon called the Fat Man. My bad. Now, it's 2020, and I have one problem with this moveset. It wasn't designed with actual gameplay in mind, it was just designed to translate Vault Boy perk pictures and Fallout weapons into the aesthetics of a Smash Bros moveset. I think there's a lot of value in scouring through a character's history and finding what would translate well to Smash. This approach can make a moveset something of a museum of that character's past, which is great, especially when we want to celebrate the game characters we love, and also Goku, maybe. But I think it's also important to ask what a character could do in the sandbox of Smash, what archetype they could fill. So, for Vault Boy, I want to work with what I've already done, but flesh out these ideas and evolve the concept. Kind of like how Smash 64 characters still have their core original kits. After all, war never changes, so why should this moveset? Which means I won't be reworking Vats into a big gimmick or adding a dialogue tree into a Smash moveset. Instead, I'll take what I've already shown you and cover it with that Smash Bros cheese. Design philosophy time, starting with his normals. Vault Boy himself is a cartoon character, even in universe. And cartoony characters in Smash, like Mario, Banjo or Pac-Man, typically have scrappy, up-close normal moves. Of course, Mario's moves combo more fluidly because he's from a game about movement and he's more of a rushdown character. Vault Boy would be closer to Banjo and Pac-Man's zoning design. His his normal moves wouldn't really flow, but they would be beefy. He'd be differentiated from those characters, however, with his normal moves that use projectiles like his forward and back airs or his dash attack. In that sense, he's kind of like an animal crosser. So imagine if Villager got really drunk and into an angry bar fight. That's the feel and impact I'd go for with his normal moves. For his special moves, let's think about Fallout itself. Fallout is a game about a world of scarcity and a world that is built on the ruins of what came before. The people of Fallout are forced to reuse whatever they can get their hands on just to get by. With that in mind, for his neutral special, I'd like to swap his 10mm pistol for his forward airs revolver. I think the 10mm makes more sense for a move about stray, annoying pot shots, which is what the forward air should be. The new neutral special, the revolver, is more of a hand cannon and should be much stronger. The catch is, your ammo is limited, just like in Fallout. That's right, I'm ripping off Wonder Wing. Your revolver has 5 shots at each stock. Use them all and you'll be dry. I don't think these shots should be nearly as powerful as Wonder Wing, but they would be decently strong and have very good range and speed. So. Five times a stock, you'll have the chance to make the most of an opening with very little risk. I feel like a wasteland scavenger having to make every shot count fits Fallout quite well. But if you're Todd Howard and I've misunderstood your game completely, feel free to leave a comment below. Now for the rocket launcher. Press side B to fire a random object as a projectile. These makeshift missiles might have very slight differences in size and trajectory, or they could only be different aesthetically. I think both options work, but either way, so far this just sounds like a generic ranged attack. This is where I'm going to take some more inspiration from the animal crosses. If you hold side B after firing, Vault Boy will hold out the rocket launcher. If an opponent shoots the launcher with a projectile, the launcher will be loaded with that projectile, and then the next shot of a rocket launcher is that projectile. So it'd be villagers 
Ranger's pocket only can hold it out. The drawback would be that the rocket launch would be a very laggy move, both on startup and as end lag when you put it away. So you may hard counter projectiles as an option while using this move, but at the cost of being a sitting duck for every other kind of attack. Not only would this poor man's pocket play into the fun of the rocket launcher, but it also reflects the opportunistic reusing of what you find that is so core to Fallout's fantasy. At this point, Volboy is looking a lot like Isabel with a worse fashion sense, and not helping is the fact that his down B is a mine. What if a bottle capped mine was not something you plant immediately at your feet, but something you lob out ahead of you? This means you can use it as a mid-range projectile, kinda sorta like Inkling Splat Bomb, or you can let it set and use it as a trap for stage control. To differentiate it further, Volboy could be hurt by its explosion as well, although he couldn't trigger it himself. Volboy would be a zoner, and kind of campy, I mean, someone who spent their life in a shelter is used to staying put, but he couldn't hide right behind this mine. This way, the bottle cap mine could be more aggressive than Isabel's Lloyd and open up slightly more dynamic gameplay. For his up B, I always envisioned the iBot not having a hitbox and being a decent recovery move. I imagine it'd be unremarkable vertically, but horizontally it would give you a lot of freedom for a very brief moment, and it'd explode if hit, hurting Vault Boy. Maybe this wouldn't work because iBots aren't actually all that zippy, so what if it could be a slower, more vulnerable recovery, but the iBot would try and cover you with auto-targeting laser blasts? I think there's many ways to implement this robot as a recovery, and no truly wrong answers. And for the final smash, we could swap the fat man out of respect for Japan and replace it with something not much better. A giant nuke-firing robot known as Liberty Prime. Man, it'd be weird to hear someone in a Smash Bros game talk about how Democracy is truth. Communism is death. So that's my old Vault Boy moveset and how I'd update it to be something more cohesive. And I'm sorry that by cohesive, I just mean Isabel with Fallout guns. I do think this moveset is only scratching the surface of what Fallout and Vault Boy could offer. Like a focus on VATS or Fallout 1 and 2 or Fallout 4 would all lead to completely different design spaces. Hopefully this kind of showed my thought process and how I like to think about moveset design. And if not, I'm just so excited that five years later, I can actually play as a gorgeous looking official Vault Boy model in a Smash Bros game. It's funny, as a me gunner, Vault Boy uses the Alien Blaster, which isn't even a weapon I considered for this moveset, but it absolutely fits the 50s sci-fi vibe that a lot of Fallout has. I do kind of wish there was a me sword fighter where he uses the nail board. I've always wanted to hit Yoshi in the face of one of those, and now that I've said that out loud, Nintendo probably won't ever let me in their theme park. I hope a silly little video like this about the character behind a Mii costume could remind you of the joy that games like Smash can bring. At the time of writing this, things have been rough for the Smash community, to say the least. Even if individual people in the community are capable of horrible things, I hope you remember why a community exists to begin with. Smash Bros is a series about celebrating video games as a medium, be it through characters, songs, or even me costumes. It's a game you might start playing because you love a certain game or series and want to express that, and then you meet people who love entirely different games to you, but in Smash, you share an understanding that video games can be special. So the Smash community is united by the love of an art form, and that sounds like a community that should be welcoming and also safe for everyone. So going forward, be good to each other and do what you can do to make sure everyone is able to enjoy this game and all games without fear, without risk, without abuse. Except I guess you can enjoy Resident Evil games with fear. They're supposed to be scary, that's fine. Oh, by the way, regarding this video's title, Volpe wasn't actually my first Smash Bros moveset concept. That would be my high school duck-based superhero OC, Captain Quackers. For his neutral B, he'd throw eggs at people. Bye! Oh.